All right, in this video, we'll be taking a look at your settings for iCloud on your iPhone or iPad. And the big thing to keep in mind is with, with iCloud on one of your devices, really all it's doing, it's, it's making a backup of your stuff and backing up to iCloud. Uh, it's not actually removing anything from the phone. Uh, there's only really, if you're signed up for the photos library on iCloud, where it will, if you ask it to, shrink down some of your images so they don't take up as much space on the phone, but the photos are still there. So but with everything else, it's not removing anything. It's just leaving a local copy on your phone and then making a backup. All right, so to look at the settings, you would click on the settings app. And at the very top where you should have a picture of yourself or at least a, an avatar and your name, there's a section for Apple ID, iCloud, iTunes, and App Store. And this is a new feature in iOS 11, which is the version I'm using on this phone right now. If you were using iOS 10 or later, or earlier, I should say, uh, you would just scroll down a little ways and there's an iCloud section right around here that's by itself. And you would click on that and you'll see pretty much the same options as what I'm about to show you. We'll go back up to top and I'm gonna click on this top section here. And then you can see the iCloud icon right over here. And if I click on that, I'll now have a few different sections to look at and choose what I want to turn on or leave off. So at the very top, you're going to have this graph, which shows you, first of all, which plan you're on. As I can see by the number here, I'm on the 50 gigabyte plan. So currently there are four plans. There's a free five gigabyte plan, and then you have paid plans for 50 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes, or two terabytes. And Depending on which plan you have here, um, you'll see a readout of what's taking up space. So in my case, photos are the main thing I have on iCloud. I also have some documents and some emails and some mail folders, and I still have a lot of space. If you need to drill down a little bit further and see exactly what's taking up space, you can click on this manage storage option, and it may take a few seconds, and you're gonna enter a new screen and you'll see here exactly what's taking up space down to the very last kilobyte, really. Uh, so in my case, I could go and look on iCloud Drive, and I'll see exactly which documents and data are located in there. And so, for example, I have a bunch of manuals. Um, I'm not storing that much in iCloud Drive, so not a big deal here. But for some people, uh, this can be a pretty extensive list. All right, so as you go down here, you'll see that, you know, you'll see if you have some, some books or PDFs in iBooks. Uh, you can see how much mail is taken up, if you have some keynotes, numbers, and so on. And so it's not just the Apple apps. Um, you can see that there's data that can be stored by third-party apps, such as Day One or SoundHound. I've got a few different apps here. They're not Apple apps. They're taking up just a little bit of space. All right, so we'll go back out one step. So below the graph, you will see exactly which apps are currently turned on for iCloud backing up. So we'll look at the photos first. I am using the iCloud photo library. So the key thing to get with the iCloud photo library is that it allows you to back up and then sync all your devices so it's exactly the same photos everywhere. And that's a key thing to understand, though, is because I've seen some clients have some problems with this. If you're using this iCloud photo library and you have some photos on the phone that you decide to delete, they're going to be deleted from everywhere else as well. So it's not a system. Once you turn this on, you can't just delete some pictures from the phone and expect them to still be on the computer, for example. They will delete from everywhere. So I just want to make that very clear because I know some people have had bad experiences other than that, it's pretty fantastic. You get to automatically, as soon as you get on a Wi-Fi network, uh, all the pictures you've just taken on the phone will automatically be backed up and uploaded to the cloud and then automatically sync to your other devices that are uh, on a Wi-Fi network. You can tell it to optimize your iPhone storage. So if you do this, the photos on your phone will stay there, but they will be shrunken in size by about 80 to 90%. So it can dramatically reduce the space they're taking up on your phone. They'll still look really good on the phone. They're just not necessarily a size that you wouldn't want to print out something, a big poster, let's say. You can also choose, if you have a phone with tons of space, you can just leave the originals on the phone. 
upload to my photo stream. So as soon as uh, you get on a Wi-Fi network, uh, any photos you've taken recently will automatically shoot up to the cloud. I think for most people, you'd want this. Even if you're not on a paid plan, um, this does not count against your iCloud quota, if you will. So I, I recommend everybody turn this on. The upload burst photos. So those are the rapid fire photos you can take. Let's say you're at a soccer game. Um, those add up. It can take, you know, 20 pictures in a, in a second and a half or so. So you may not want to have that on. Uh, that's up to you. If, if those pictures are important to you, then yes, turn that on iCloud photo sharing. So if you turn that on, you can share albums. People can add their own photos to your albums. Uh, this is a pretty cool little feature. It can take up space on your iCloud or against your account, I should say. Uh, so do be careful with that. If you have a lot of friends and family that just tend to send you a lot of uh, pictures and videos this way, you'd want to be aware that this can add up pretty quickly. All right, so the next ones below photos, mail, contacts, calendars, reminders, and notes, I think everyone should have turned on. If you're taking notes on your phone, you ideally want that syncing to your other devices. And the same for the contacts, calendars, reminders. So I think for everybody, you want to turn that on. Safari, that's just going to sync your bookmarks. So any bookmarks you've created on your computer will also sync to the phone and vice versa. So this is a pretty good little feature. The news, all that does is that if you're using the news app on one of your devices, iPad or iPhone, and you've customized it and you tell it which publications and newspapers you like, if you have this on, that's going to sync that information across your devices. So basically the way you customize it on one device is going to synchronize all the way across. So that for some people, I don't really use the news app too much to be honest, but it doesn't take any space. The health app. Same thing, it's going to sync your health um, information across multiple devices. Same thing with the wallet, Game Center, Siri. That sounds kind of weird, but Siri on your phone uh, over the course of weeks and months is going to get better at recognizing what you're asking it. And so if you set up a new iPad, for example, you would probably want that, um, that feature turned on so that Siri automatically knows how you speak, basically. A little bit creepy, but it's, uh, it's a pretty useful little feature. Keychain is there to save your passwords and credit card information. Uh, not all your passwords, but your online passwords on websites that you've used in Safari. If you were asking it to save your passwords, that's what the keychain does. Um, and same with your credit card information. So for most people, you'd want to leave that on. I do still feel very secure about Apple security when it comes to the keychain, even though they've had some goof up software wise recently. Um, as of yet, I'm still very much uh, in favor of keeping keychain turned on. Find my iPhone is a very useful feature. If you've lost uh, your phone or iPad, or you think it's been stolen, or you just simply can't find it, you leave this on and you'll be able to see that device, hopefully, on a map, and I'll show you how to do that uh, on the web version of iCloud in the next video. And then iCloud backup. So the iCloud backup, if particularly if you're not using a Mac, you probably want this turned on. That's going to have a full backup of your phone. So if something happens to your phone, if you need to get a new phone, it'll bring everything back exactly as it was. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that this can take up a lot of space. Um, if you have a lot of videos, for example, in your text messages, those are being backed up. And I've seen some people with 10, 20 gigabytes worth of messages, um, you know, years of conversations with families and friends, and that can really add up. So if you turn this on and you have, like I said, tons of messages or really big size, this could make for a really big backup and it could force you into buying one of the upgraded plans. So just keep that in mind iCloud Drive is going to, it's fairly self-explanatory, anything you keep in the iCloud Drive on your computer, if you have this on, it's going to uh, store a copy uh, on the phone for you. All right, as we go down the list, you'll see that numbers, keynote, clips, and so on, these are the Apple apps. Um, if you leave these on, it's gonna be syncing ac across all devices. As you can see, iCloud can sync a lot of third-party applications for you in the background. 
And that's going to be up to you to decide whether you want these turn on or off. But for the most part, the impact as far as your iCloud quota uh, is not really going to be affected much by these being turned on. All right, so that's it for the iCloud settings. Um, poke around in here, experiment, and um, we'll be looking at the web section of iCloud in the next video.